it really is the most um, the most incredible thing to know the nature of mind, to know the nature of intelligence, to know the way that our mind works and to know the nature of reality. Um, because whatever we're doing, wherever we are, whoever we're with, then there is an intelligence that is naturally present, that sees everything, that knows everything, and that intelligence is wide open like a clear sky, naturally present, as I said, and easily identifiable. So I, to identify this intelligence that's naturally open, naturally present, completely reliable, just stop thinking for a moment. Just relax the need to describe anything. And see for yourself that there is an intelligence that's looking through your eyes, that's hearing these words, that knows you're sitting here, experiencing everything you're experiencing. Now nothing was required for that intelligence to be there. You didn't need to think it into existence, you didn't need to have a certain set of experience for it to be there. And there is a very simple test that you can take with you in your day of short moments of just relaxing the need to describe everything, allowing everything to be as it is, and see for yourself whether that this openness of intelligence is always naturally present. And this is a very powerful way in our own experience that we can get to see the nature of mind, the nature of intelligence. Is it always naturally present? Is it always wide open? And is it indivisible, inseparable from all of our experience? So in the Balanced View training we have a really simple terminology. There's open intelligence that you've just identified, the intelligence that's looking through your eyes now. And then there is data, streaming, open intelligence streaming data. And data is just a term to simplify everything. My life seemed very complicated. I had all kinds of belief systems, ideas, concepts, experiences, sensations, emotions, and all of these different descriptions based around all these different ideas. And so trying to make sense of things was often very complicated because I had to juggle all of these different ideas. And to simplify it and to see that right now in this moment there's open intelligence and there is data. Data is the dynamic energy of open intelligence. So whatever you're perceiving, whatever you're experiencing, whatever you're sensing, thinking or feeling, that is data. That is the dynamic energy of open intelligence. It's the liveliness of open intelligence. And you can't take data out from open intelligence. They're inseparable. And the way to um, get a sense of that is through these powerful analogies that we use in the training, like the color blue and the sky. So it's impossible to take out the color blue from the sky. They're inseparable. It is impossible to take out the breeze from the air. They're inseparable. The breeze is the dynamic energy of the air. Without the breeze, we wouldn't even be aware of the air. And so these are very powerful metaphors that elicit this instinctive recognition of the inseparability of open intelligence and data. Data are the dynamic energy, the beneficial potency of open intelligence. Now, what's happened in conventional society is that we've learned to label and describe our experience based on lots of different ideas and concepts and belief systems. And the result of doing so means that life seems very complicated, it seems like there's a struggle going on, it seems like I need to control and manipulate and manage my experience, my data. I've learned that there are a set of descriptions that are the ones that I should be having, there are a set of descriptions that are the ones that I shouldn't be having, the negative ones, so sadness, boredom, anxiety, um, and then there's quite a few in the middle that I'm not really too fussed about, the neutral ones. And from the conventional perspective, life is really about sorting our experience, managing our experience. So how do I come to have as many positive experiences as possible? How can I ensure that I'm always happy? How can I ensure that I'm never sad or bored or lonely or miserable? And that's what we set about doing. 
We put our time and our energy into managing our experience, or trying to. So working out what makes me happy, what makes me sad, how do I get more of the happiness and how do I keep the sadness at bay. And that's what I did and I put all of my time and energy into that, that practice. Um, and I'm pleased to report that it was a complete failure absolute failure because no matter how hard I tried and I tried really hard um, I could not control my experience I couldn't control how I felt on any particular day and some days I'd wake up happy and other days I'd wake up completely miserable and sick and um, physical illness and sickness were descriptions that I'd learned to put into the negative category so that when I'm feeling sick, or I'm feeling weak, or I'm feeling ill, then those belong in the category of descriptions that I shouldn't be having. Um, so when I'm sick and I'm ill, then obviously that means that I'm miserable too. So it was really fascinating for me to apply this practice of short moments in a direct encounter with all of my daily experience, with all of my data from, from each day. And to see for myself that no matter what I was thinking, feeling or sensing, it was nothing other than the dynamic energy of open intelligence. It appeared spontaneously, like a rainbow appearing in the sky, and then it self-released naturally, like mist burning off in the midday sun. There wasn't any effort required in any of this process. I saw for myself that when I relaxed the need to describe everything, then the nature of reality just became crystal clear. And the nature of reality, seeing everything appearing as this spontaneous display, and then self-releasing naturally in a seamless expanse of complete openness, was just the way that things were. And so seeing that in the direct encounter with things like physical illness or loneliness or um, sadness or feeling like everything's pointless, seeing that what I could do in that moment was choose to either spin off into the world of descriptions, which is something that I'd tested out for 35 years when I came to this training, and I knew that that was just a spiral into ever-increasing suffering, misery and despair. Or I could rely on open intelligence and allow everything to be as it is and to see that I was not a victim to any data stream. And I began to see, particularly through doing the 12 empowerments, how I had made myself a victim to all of the thoughts, emotions and sensations, all of the belief systems that I'd learned in my life. Learning that um, if things didn't look the way that I had, had been taught and had then trained myself in that the way they should look, so I should have positive, happy thoughts, for example, then that was a sign that there was something wrong with me, that I was deeply flawed, or there was something wrong with the people I was with, or there was something wrong with my life, or the place where I was. Constantly trying to find these cause and effect relationships and working out what I could tweak or change or adapt in my life and pouring all of my energy into that. But then I'd wake up the next day and I'd still feel depressed or lonely. And so to come to the point of the recognition of the futility of trying to manage and manipulate our experience and how this just leads to exhaustion and more and more suffering, even though all we're looking for is the relief from the suffering, even though all we're looking for is this way that we can be these powerful, dignified, capable, loving human beings, but never actually finding that. I didn't learn that there was any other way I could go about my life. I just didn't know there was another option. So coming here and seeing, first of all, recognizing instinctively that there was something about me that there was constant, that was reliable, that was immediately accessible. And when I did begin to rely on this openness of intelligence, this openness of perception, then I simply knew what to do and what to say in each circumstance. Which was incredible. Absolutely incredible. I'd had glimpses of it throughout my life. I knew that there was something there that I was just missing. I knew there was something there that I hadn't been told about. It was like there was um, 
It was something that was just out of reach, but I knew it was there. And um, that's why I'd been doing all of the seeking in my life, all of the searching in, in all kinds of ways. You know, looking for an experience that would make me feel okay, or reading another book that somehow would give me what I was looking for, or another intimate relationship that would make me complete, or having enough money that meant I could then relax and be secure. But looking into these things and, and never actually finding what I wanted in any of them. Um, and it didn't mean that I didn't enjoy them or that they weren't enjoyable at times, but it never gave me this ultimate satisfaction that I, I knew was there. And as soon as I was introduced to open intelligence and I saw that actually what I was looking for was what was looking. This brilliance of intelligence, seeing everything clearly, seeing this whole mechanism of the emphasis on data, the belief in the independent nature of data and how that had affected me and all of my relationships. And then being supported and empowered to see that I did have this choice that there was this group of people all around the world who were also committed to living as open intelligence, to living this empowered lifestyle and being given a tool and a gift of the practice of short moments which is like, it's like a, a, a reset button. So if I'm caught up in all of my thoughts and emotions and somebody's said something and somebody's done something and I'm feeling hot and I'm bothered and mosquito bites are itching and it's all getting too much and maybe I say something unkind or you know, what do I do? How do I deal with that situation? I press this reset button. I stop describing. I return to this original natural state, this original dignity I have always access to as a human being. My open intelligence, the open intelligence that is the open intelligence of the universe. That's what's looking through your eyes. Including all of everything that you've learned about yourself. You don't need to get rid of yourself or any ideas you have about that. You allow those to be as they are too. And from that perspective there is this naturally balanced view. Just seeing everything as it is. Not through this filter of all of these really bizarre ideas that we've accumulated about what's going on and who we are and how we deal with it but returning to this original dignity, this clear, bright seeing. And as soon as we return to that, we know exactly what to do and what to say in each circumstance. But for myself, the habit of emphasizing the data stream, so um, focusing in on a particular thought or sensation or emotion, um, was so ingrained and was something that I'd been doing for so long that I needed support. You know, I had this recognition in this, in this introduction, just stopping thinking, there it was. But this habit of collapsing back into the descriptions was one that I'd been so used to doing that I, I, I saw quite quickly that I did need support. And every time I listened to um, a talk from the website or I came to an open meeting or, or I just spent time with other people relying on open intelligence, that reminded me too that I could also relax just even for a short moment and allow everything to be as it was. And each time I did that, it was this sense of relief. There was a sense of relaxation. There was a sense of openness. Um, and, and there was this, this dignity. There was this giving up this life of victimhood, of believing that I was a victim to what I thought, what I felt, what other people said, what other people did what was going on in the world, the suffering that I saw around me. The victimhood for me there was a sense of um, complete hopelessness and helplessness. You know, looking at any, any news media now, it's just overwhelming how much negativity and how much suffering is going on in the world. And I see that as I train up in open intelligence, my capacity to take in all of this suffering, and to give out the bliss that marks the end of this, this total openness. And to see that in that I am making the most powerful stand that can be taken against this, this, this way that conventional society has been set up. 
that we can make this most radical political act of making ourselves these completely open-hearted and powerful peace zones. Peace zones, each one of us. That's the only way everything, anything's really going to change. If we're waiting for some figure to come down and sort it out for us, whether it's a politician or a messiah, or it's up to each one of us. And I find that so empowering. And here, in this training, I've discovered how I can do that, how I can bring this peace to my life and my relating wherever I am. So we do have this, this, this environment here where we train this up, but it's not... And it's amazing to have this safe environment and very, very powerful. But this training is so that we can then go out into the world and take that peace with us wherever we are. And the support network here is, des is designed specifically so that you can do that. You know, you can take the mp3s or the downloads with you wherever you are. You can take short moments with you where, wherever you are. There are communities all around the world. Um, we have so much offered online, video conferencing. It, it's all there. You can take a book or a booklet away with you. It, it's really up to you. It's, um, it's a lifestyle. You can live a lifestyle of being an empowered benefit creator, empowering everyone that you meet with this perfect love, this open-hearted brilliance of what it really means to be a human being, what you've actually always known, but perhaps never knew how to access or how to express. And in this training we learn how to access it and how to express it and see how natural it is. It's not difficult, it's not complicated. It's actually who we are. We, we just need to get familiar with it.